distracting backgrounds on your macro shots? Let's fix that. Today we'll create a perfect backdrop in Affinity Photo, giving your tiny subjects the spotlight they deserve. So the first thing we need to do is to isolate our subject. With the latest version of Affinity Photo, this is going to be a breeze, as we can use the Object Selection tool. Once our subject is selected, let's press the Refine button from the toolbar. In the Refine dialog, let's change the preview to black matte to see how the subject looks on a black background. If needed, we still have the possibility to fix any masking issues, but this looks good enough for me. To actually isolate our subject, we can change the output to New Layer with Mask. When we press Apply, the original image layer will be deactivated and a new layer will be added with the mask applied, with as a result that we have our subject on a separate layer. Excellent! I want to extend the canvas a bit so that the subject gets a bit more space around it. For that, we can use the Crop tool and extend the width and the height. Quick tip, you can hold the Command or Control key while resizing the canvas. This will ensure that both sides are resized, keeping the subject centered. Because we adjusted the canvas, we got some masking issues around old canvas size. To fix that, I can select the mask and then use the brush tool to fix the mask. Press D on your keyboard to get the default colors black and white, and while black is selected, paint over the problem areas. To create the backdrop, I'll select the original image and add a fill layer using the layer menu. We now have a fill layer below our masked subject. I'm going to add a radial gradient to this fill. So let's select the gradient tool and change the gradient type to radial from the toolbar. Let's draw our gradient and set the colors. For the center color, I'm going to sample a color from our subject by holding the Alt or Option key to enable the color picker. That looks pretty nice. A quick adjustment to the gradient and we're almost done. The gradient looks a bit boring. To make it more interesting, I'm going to duplicate the original image and move it on top of the fill layer. Let's make it bigger so it fits the canvas and add a live Gaussian blur filter to it. In the Gaussian blur dialog, I'm going to crank up the radius quite a bit until we have a nice smooth image. The final step is to change the blend mode of this blurred image to multiply and we're done. Time to fine tune the backdrop. Because the background gradient color was already quite dark, the blurred image in multiply blend mode did not have much effect. But if we make the colors in the gradient a bit lighter, we probably will get a much better result. We can also reposition, resize or even rotate the blurred image to find the best look. Adjusting the opacity is also something you can try out and using different blend modes might also be interesting. For example, I'm going to use the hardline blend mode and adjust the gradient colors and the fill percentage to get a pleasing look. Optionally, we can also add a tiny bit of shadow to the subject to give that extra fine separation from the background. And finally, you can add an HSL adjustment on top of the background to adjust the color to your liking and even change the blend mode of the HSL adjustment to make interesting color combos. Here's a quick look at the second example, where I'll quickly go through the steps to show you that the process was exactly the same. So first, I separated the subject and because the legs of the fly was partly covered, I gently masked them out so they look a bit up out of focus. A green gradient background with on top the blurred image and finally some fixes on top, especially to get the antennas back. I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks again for tuning in. Hit the like and subscribe buttons before you leave and until the next video.